Nearly 90% of homeless Portlanders swept from encampments are back on the streets. Just 1% got permanent housing. One out of 100 that was offered housing ended up in real housing. How is this even possible? I mean, this is, these are some nutty figures that we're going to get into. All right, let's jump on in. Let's see what we got going on in Portland. Love to have you subscribe. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit the notification bell. Found a lot of our subscribers. They got miraculously, mysteriously unsubscribed. Also, don't forget to check out reasonabletv.com. That's our members only section. Got content there you won't find anywhere else. There's the good stuff. So of the roughly 1,700 homeless Portlanders offered shelter during city sweeps of encampments over the past 10 months, just 11% remain in some form of temporary shelter, and fewer than 1% are permanently housed. Data provided by the Multnomah County shows vast, and this is what we talk about all the time, the vast majority of folks who are swept from encampments just end up somewhere else in the streets, and they do not want to go into housing. That's the bottom line. That is overwhelmingly what this data shows. But our solution? Build more housing. Huh. How do you think that's going to work out? Two-thirds of people swept from campus declined the offer of temporary shelter, the county reported. And among the other third who did move indoors, the typical individual stayed for two weeks and is back on the streets or at another unknown destination, the data shows. Okay. So almost everybody who could, who wanted to, which is one third of all the folks that are being swept, they got into they got into some some type of temporary. Maybe they just wanted off the streets for a little bit. But two thirds of them, right off the bat, basically stated, "Nope, don't want your help. I want to continue living on the streets. That's what I'm going to do." The other third got into some kind of temporary housing for just a little bit, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe a week, something like that. It could be, you know, super short time period because housing, that counts like one night, one overnight counts in a lot of jurisdictions. But yeah, these numbers are insane. But this is the hardcore reality that the vast majority of these folks in these encampments, this is where they want to be because this is where they can do the lifestyle. This is where they can make this happen. Where else in America? Do we create an area that's just rife with drugs and then it's just rife with committing crimes to, you know, basically fund those addictions? And then the government kicks in. Hey, you need a tent? Here you go. You need a tarp? Here you go. You need a cigarette? Here you go. Literally, social workers will come out and, and do that all day long. You need some food? Here you go. Want some water? Here you go. Here's a, you know, food stamps card go, you know, take that. And, and in Oregon, you get 10 cents for a deposit of a plastic bottle, go buy your case of water. You got $2 and 40 cents. Do four of those, you got 10 bucks. Yeah. You got your days worth the pills there, ready to go. I mean, this is literally why folks who are so wildly addicted to drugs are coming to a Portland, are coming to a Seattle, are coming to a San Francisco, are coming to Skid Row. Because these are the environments where we're letting this happen. And yet our solution seems to be, well, if we could just get them off the streets into housing, everything will be okay. Oh, that doesn't really work out, does it? That adds up to as many as 89% of the individuals cleared from an encampment back sleeping unsheltered somewhere in the city. And you know what? It's almost 100% of these folks. Very few get off the streets. And it's because very few want to. They want to keep doing what they're doing. They're there for a reason. And yet these drugs are taking them down like flies. And you might say, well, there you go, Sean. There's the solution. Just open it up. Let them just, you know, kill each other willy nilly. All right. I hear you on that. But what if that was your kid? Again, what if that was your granddaughter, your grandson, your nephew, your whatever, your sister, your mom? Yeah. Would you want somebody to try and reach out and help them? I think you would. But we're not going down those roads, are we? We're just like, ah, it's okay. You can quit wherever you want to. We're going to give you this housing in the meantime. 
Of the people who access shelter after being swept, 16% still are using a shelter bed, with those individuals clocking stays of two or three months. Not everyone whose tent was swept was offered shelter. This could be because they were not in their tent at the time of the sweep. So much of this is a fluid situation, right? I mean, it's not like these people have a known residence. Oftentimes they'll get mail or whatever. And they'll have a, an address of a homeless shelter somewhere and they'll use that. But these people are literally oftentimes on the run from the law. And that's why you have so much of the criminal activity in the homeless encampments doesn't get reported because either the person who did it or the recipient of whatever violence you know, has got a warrant out for the arrest or they've been involved in something, they just don't want to make a lot of ruckus, right? So that's why you've got so much of this stuff going on in the encampments and nothing ever gets figured out because mom's the word, right? Mom's the word. On the street, you don't want to be in snitch, right? Snitches get stitches. So of the nearly 1,700 people who were offered services, here's how it breaks down. And that's because Portland has gone to, by 2024, camping in the streets is going to be illegal. I mean, good luck with that. But then Mayor Ted also campaigned that he was going to eradicate the homeless issue by 2018. Mm. Yeah, it's not working out well either. So less than 1% have moved into permanent housing. Less than 1%. Slightly more than 1% went to transitional housing, including hotel rooms, paid by vouchers, temporary stays with friends or family, or temporary apartment placements while they're on wait on a permanent home. About 3% moved to a different shelter program, such as a motel shelter or tiny home village. Less than 1% exited to an institutional facility, such as a hospital, jail, nursing home, or psychiatric or substance use treatment center. Two people died. Now let's go back to, okay, we got less than 1% went from a sweep to an institutional facility, such as a hospital, a jail, nursing home, or psychiatric or substance use treatment center. Because you can't involuntarily make these folks go, depending on what their condition is. But it's really, if you hang out at a homeless encampment, it's really sad just to hang out there. Because you'll see sometimes people that are, you know, they are they are really emotionally torn apart. Something happened in their life that made them just go sideways. And then they turn to drugs as a way to cope. And then that turns on them sideways as well. So it's, you know, it's this never ending cycle that's just, and when you see these people out in the encampment, sometimes, you know, they're dudes without their shirts on and no pants, and no shorts or uh, uh, shoes. <laughs> it's just, sometimes no pants, sometimes no clothes at all, right? That's when you get the 911 call. Ah, got a naked dude here. He's, he's in a psychotic episode. You've got so many people that are in need of help. And yet what we're doing is, oh, let's just you know, put them overnight in the shelter. Oh, let's just put them you know, overnight in whatever hotel we can come up with. Yeah, it'll work out. Because it's kind of, this is the system. This is what we're doing. And then we're talking about build, building billions of dollars worth of homeless shelter here in Seattle. Billions. The current um, proposal is like $11.5 billion. And we're already spending, what, a quarter billion? $250 million, something like that, $150 million? Kind of depends on what area you're covering and how all that goes in Seattle. So you want to crank it up to $11.5 billion and hope that this you know, all gets squared away. Yeah, whatever we're doing right now certainly isn't working. I'm not sure that another $11.5 billion that magically just appears from somewhere because the, the budgets are going to go the wrong way. You got lack of income from coming from these downtown areas, you know, and you've got a real estate slowdown, your excise tax, all that stuff. That's in a slowdown right now. Real estate drives so much of the economy, especially in the government, the, you know, paying the taxes in these governmental entities. And that, pay, you know, that covers a lot of overhead. And when real estate slows down, like it's been slow the last, call it eight months. Yeah. You're going to have some budgets that are just going to get rocked. So, you know, during this, oh, we need $11.5 billion. The mayor is looking at it going, oh, what? What on what planet do we just have eleven and a half billion dollars sitting around that we're going to just you know throw into this? 
Those who moved into a group shelter after being swept from camping outdoors typically stayed in a shelter bed for half as long as people who came to congregate shelters on their own, said Dennis Thoreau, spokesperson for the Joint City Council Homeless Services Office. I don't really know what that stat means, but I'm sure it's significant somewhere. Tent sweeps have increased dramatically since Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler last ordered an unprecedented mass sweeps of Old Town. He also declared emergencies that banned camping along high crash corridors and commonly traveled routes to schools. Most recently, he ordered a mass sweep in the central east side. And while all these sweeps are going, what do you think is happening with the Portland homeless issue? You got it. It's just getting worse. It's people know they can go here and do their thing. I mean, you got super cheap drugs and they're plentiful. So you got a supply and a demand that are being met. And these, these drugs are cheap now. Buck a pill, a couple of bucks a pill. You know, they're synthetic and they're crazy, crazy strong. Sometimes the fentanyl is 50 times stronger than heroin. I mean, those are some drugs that, you know, people want to hop on and, you know, just ride their ride. But unfortunately, it tends to kill them at times, too. Mm, that's not good. Cody Bowman, spokesman for Wheeler, said officials in the mayor's office are grateful for the shelter bed set aside program since connecting people to a shelter can lead to permanent or transitional housing. Yeah, 1%, maybe. 1%. Can, can, can you get anywhere higher than like one or 10% or something? Something? No. And you know why those numbers are so low? These people don't want to be in housing. That's the bottom line, right? That's the bottom line. That is what the data and the science is telling us. They don't want to be in housing that comes with conditions. And a lot of the you know housing comes with some kind of condition. So if you're, you know, just doing your own thing, if you're cowboying it or cowgirling it up there in a tent somewhere, you're doing your own thing, you want to keep doing that, housing's not for you. And that is what the vast majority of this data is saying right here. And so based on the data and the science of this article, the vast majority of folks who are in, the vast majority of folks who are in these encampments they do not want to go into housing. And yet we keep saying, well, you know, we build more housing and it'll all be good. Doesn't seem like the actual hard data that we're faced with jives with what we're going to as recommendations for solving the problem. This aligns with the mayor's top priority to get Portlanders stabilized, better connected to services and into housing, Bowman said in a statement. This is why he continues to lead on developing temporary alternative shelter sites where individuals experiencing homelessness can have a safe and secure place to stay while they are better connected to services. Well, the vast majority of folks don't go into this type of shelter because they say it's dangerous. You know what I say is dangerous? The homeless encampments. So it's kind of a matter of, all right, but yeah, in the encampments, I can still do my thing. One of the the homeless encampments, the Department of Transportation, just late last week, cleaned up. I don't mean swept. They didn't really do anything, but they did can't come in and take like six massive, you know, commercial flatbed trailers of garbage out. They took out a just an all smashed up cash machine. There was a cash machine, a stolen cash machine, in this homeless encampment. So you put that on top of the fireworks that were being set off and going on to Interstate 5 from this encampment, three shootings, fires all the time. I mean, you got some real just crazy stuff going on. But even with all of that going on, known stolen goods, these folks would rather live in that environment because they can keep doing their thing, keep doing their drugs, than move into temporary housing. That's what this article is stating. Point blank. So at the end of 2020-22, Wheeler announced a plan to ban street camping as soon as 2024 after creating mass tent sites run by the city. The city is currently considering contractors bids to operate such sites. This week, Commissioner Rene Gonzalez also banned Portland Street Response from handing out tents or tarps to homeless individuals. I've got a podcast. It's probably out. It's, I think it'll be out in the next day or so on just that. They've had so many fires because believe it or not, 
you take a nylon tent with some rubber material in it, with some oil-based material in it for waterproofing and whatnot, and you set those on fire? Yeah. I, honestly, it doesn't work out that well, right? I mean, and these, so these, so the tarps and the tents, I think we'd give it out 22,000 tarps or tents and 37,000 tarps, just some crazy number down in the county that Portland is located in. And the new commissioner said, no mas, no more tents, no more tarps, but you can give out sleeping bags. So that's what they're doing. And this is, um, you know, I don't know how, how, how temporary that is, but you know it's bad when an entity says, nope, we're not giving out any more free stuff. An entity like Portland that is known, it's like Seattle, free Seattle. Come here, do your drugs. You can steal stuff from the neighboring businesses. You can steal stuff from the neighboring residents. You can sell it here on the streets that basically got open air, you know, drug and, you know, criminal sales of stolen goods. Got that going on. I mean, why wouldn't people want to come to these cities that they're known for? Yeah, they can do the circuit. They can literally go up and down the West Coast. Got the circuit. So the response team, which provides emergency support to people experiencing a mental health crisis, previously offered those items to people as part of their life-saving supplies for those who couldn't access shelter or housing, particularly during severe weather. Well, they always open up uh, severe weather shelters also. But Portland and Multnomah County shut one of those down right as it was getting cold. It was like, what are you guys doing? You guys just need, you guys need, need to get on some kind of schedule. Gonzalez said handing out tents led to more tent fires, which people typically start to keep warm or to cook food or to smoke drugs. In his announcement, he encouraged people to seek shelter instead of sleeping in a tent. You know what? They're not going to go there because then they got to live by rules and they just don't want to do that. Wild stuff, right? So the saga continues. The saga continues of what we already know. But I think it's really interesting to note, okay, you're going to talk about the 700. Let's talk about, let's go back to a section here. Um, and it is um, Mayor Ted basically outlawing outdoor camping, urban camping, and putting those residents into like a handful. I think it was up to six of these encampments. It's going to put a total of 750 people in these encampments. Well, how many homeless people do we have in Multnomah County? Thousands and thousands and thousands. How many do we have in Portland? 6,000? 8,000? The official counts, maybe 3,000, but double that or triple that, I'm sure, right? So, you know, you've got these plans, but here's the bottom line. These folks, we know from this article, and there's a ton of other evidence out there, will not go into this type of housing situation. They want to keep doing their thing in their own tent that they can move around willy-nilly when things get hot because they will, because they're always involved in something because that's what it takes. They're always hustling. Hustling is the word you keep hearing. Hustling. Well, what are you doing? How do you make money for your drugs? I hustle. What does that mean? You know, I make ends meet. Go there, go there. Yeah, I, yeah, every now and then I'll do a legit job just so I feel good about myself. But vast majority of these folks, they're hustling. And you can just imagine what that is. Stealing. Maybe they're selling their body. You know, you name it, they're doing it. And they're not doing it legal. And they're doing it because they want to keep this lifestyle going. If they didn't, they would be seeking out real help. And, you know, we just saw the percentages. How many of them really want to get permanent housing? You know, if they, I think if they could and still keep doing the drugs, which it sounds like a lot of entities, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to build billions of dollars worth of housing, not make it conditioned upon sobriety or anything that would actually help people, but just give them a roof over their head. Hopefully they'll get better. You know, we talk about bringing in services and, and all that good stuff, but I think you should start with bringing in the services up front. Get people to commit to something, you know, to save their lives. But we're not going down those roads. We're not even close to that. We're going down other avenues that let people have the choice. And guess what? People who are addicted to drugs. They don't really want to make choices that, you know, that um, the rest of us would probably wish they made because they'd be better people. 
They'd cause less damage to the community. They'd take up less space in jail. All that stuff. Possibly wouldn't OD. Yeah, because you got a lot of that going on right now. A lot of that going on right now. All right, that's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. Don't forget to check out our Discord channel. Let's go take a look at it right now. So here's our Discord channel, Reasonable TV. You message people. Got all of the, I've got links to all the articles that I uh, podcast. And also I talk about them and make comments and you guys can make comments. All of this is free. We've also got a, we got a Twitter feed. We got cool stuff in there. Also we've got a general chat. We got stuff going on there. But rock on. That's my favorite section. Here, here's a post I did of Cocaine Bear. Who doesn't want to see the trailer for Cocaine Bear? It's good stuff in there. What else do we have in Rock On? Well, we've got some Frank Zappa. We've got some, oh, we got some Iron Maiden there. Uh, we got a video that I shot. Bruce stops the show. That's an Iron Maiden. I got 300,000. We got some Jim Morrison. We got some Kurt Cobain of early Nirvana. Check out our Discord channel. I don't think you'll be disappointed.